we had built on a farm, and the farms in the area uh, had a lot of apple trees around the borders as windbreaks. And so at some point, uh, when they were planting the tree, the dirt got dug up, and a seed got planted right next to the tree. And these two trees had grown together for so long and had become what, like one tree. As time on your phone. Yeah, and as um, to the point where you couldn't separate them uh, without killing both of the trees. So to the like casual eye, you would see this, this tree producing good fruit that you could eat, but in reality, it was the tree that was next to it. And for much of my life, that's what you could see. And that's what I would say I saw of myself. I knew all the right things. I had grown up in uh, a Christian household, had friends who were strong Christians who were walking with the Lord. But it was their fruit that was being produced. It wasn't mine. So... In, oops. in John 15, uh, 5 through 8, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. Apart from me, he can do nothing. If he does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown, in, thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. If uh, you remain in me and my word remains in you, uh, ask whatever you wish, for it will be given to you. This is uh, my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, uh, showing uh, yourselves to be my disciples. So, Something that really just sticks out to me is that it's your fruit. It's you. It's not the person next to you. It's not your best friend that you're like living with or like going to crew events with. Um, yeah. So a a person can like they can do all the right things. They can be a great preacher, they can be um, a Christian scholar, a deacon, an elder, they can go to every weekly meeting, they can live a clean and moral life, memorizing all the scripture, teaching Sunday school, but if they're not bearing fruit, in the sense that they're introducing others to Christ, they are not filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So what are these fruits? Um, in Galatians 5, uh, 22 and 23, it says, By, um, But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, peace patience, uh, kindness, goodness, fruitfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against all such things, there are no law. So... Before I go more into this, um, I want to just mention and hint, like talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a... Well, the Holy Spirit is God. It's not a ghost. It's not um, a divine influence or a concept, as many people might think. He is... Um, or he has a, a will, an intellect, and emotion, making him a person. He is God, uh, a part of the Trinity equal to the Father and the Son. Uh, there is only one God, and he manifests himself in three persons, uh, whom we call the Trinity. So, I'm not here to like define the Trinity to you, because I don't fully understand it, and the more I learn about it, the less I feel like I actually know. Um, but... The Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. It's, it's, uh, he is God. He's got his own will, his own uh, thoughts. And, uh, yeah, he came to give glory 
to Christ, uh, to lead believers into a holy truth. He, uh, yeah, he came to enable us to know uh, through the rebirth and um, and to give us the power uh, to live and share an abundant life, which uh, Jesus has promised and entrust, entrusted us. Uh, they promise to all who entrust their trust and obey him. Uh, he inspired holy men to write the scriptures, and he uses them to speak to us. This is why you can read a scripture and uh, why, like, what your friend who's reading the same scripture can see different points. While both are maybe true, they may be events in your life or events that um, you that are coming up that God wants to reveal this truth to you. And if you're not uh, filled with the Spirit, you're going to miss these. So, Um, sorry, I lost my place. Yeah. So, the Holy Spirit, when it fills us, and when um, we are walking with the Spirit, um, we bring glory to God. And this is how we... In a lot of ways, how I have found that I can love someone who is doing things that I don't approve of, or that I'm, as Daryl would say, convicted that they're doing the wrong thing, but I still can love them. So, yeah, the Holy Spirit uh, came to give glory to Jesus, uh, and therefore, being filled with the Spirit, or er, Therefore, if I am filled with the Spirit, I am abiding in Christ. I am walking in uh, His light, and uh, the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse and keep me clean from unrighteousness. So, ways that we can not be walking, or ways that we can see that we're not walking in the Spirit is when we're sinning. In Often, there are often times in my life and a lot of strong Christians' lives that they still sin. It, it doesn't stop magically when you become a believer. You, you still have things, um, nets, as Daryl called them, that you struggle with. You don't want to give them up. But God calls us to give them up. He calls us to um, be set apart from the world. And... Uh, yeah, so he asked us to give these up. And something, or a way that I have found and been taught to just be able to do this is through um, this concept called spiritual breathing. In uh, spiritual breathing, uh, it is like a great, um, a great word picture of this experience of living moment by moment depending on the spirit. And uh, you do this by um, exhaling, which is confessing your sins. And um, like when you become aware of them, there are times when you may be sinning and you're not aware of it. But once you become aware of that sin, confessing it, uh, and asking for his forgiveness. Now, confession requires. Uh, Repentance And repentance is a change of attitude. So it's not just like saying, oh, I've done this thing that's wrong. It's actually taking an action to change um, what you've done wrong so that you're not constantly making the same errors. The next step of this process is uh, inhaling. So it's surrender control of your life and relying upon the spirit to be filled with his presence. And, er, yeah, by the power of the faith in accordance with his commands and promises. So, I'm going to give you uh, five, just, yeah, five minutes to do this. Um, 
to pray, <laughs> to, have, to confess your sins, and then to be filled with the Spirit. To just ask Christ to um, just come back and fill that hole uh, that you may have, or to just um, continue to guide, to guide you in how uh, he wants you to be led. And then I will just kind of pray to close that time, and then I will get back and um, continue on.